We have Jimmy Johnson. He's our five-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion. He's our points leader. He's got four wins on this season. Jimmy coming into Bristol now. We've got three races before we reset the field and, and have the 2013 chase. You've already clinched a spot in that field, but I know you would like to get some more bonus points. Uh, just talk about coming here to Bristol and uh, your, your uh, outlook for this weekend. Excited to be at Bristol. Um, and this night race it was always one of my favorites to watch growing up and uh, looking forward to a packed house. And you know, it's just some great, great hard short track racing. Um, we've been a you know, top five car here over the years and hopefully we can take that next step and kind of move into that top three. Um, in my opinion, you know, run the top three, you've got a great shot at winning. So, uh, of course, we'd like to win another race here. We've done it once in our career and hopefully we can do it again. Questions for Jimmy. If you have one, raise your hand. Jimmy Johnson, questions? Right over here to the left, Kenny Bruce. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Jimmy, the issues last weekend with the engine and everything, if you guys discovered what the problem was, taking care of that, any concerns going forward? Yeah, there's there's always concern. Um, and we tested Richmond, and the guys were still asking me questions from the engine shop, you know, what I felt, the order and how things went on and failed. Um, they didn't have any clear direction then, um, and I, I'm not sure they've had a lot of time to work on everything with all four cars going to Richmond on Tuesday, Wednesday. But um, you know, definitely had one of you know, our, our engine failed and the others didn't. So in the past, that stuff usually boils down to a part failure, and um, I'm assuming that's something in that department. And uh, hopefully, we can find out what batch it came from and which part it was. You know, when things fail at a rapid rate like they do, it's hard to find the source of the issue um, you know hopefully we can narrow that down and then get new parts and pieces in place so that it doesn't happen to our car or anybody else's who's next Jim right here on the front Jim under show observer I asked uh, Mark this question earlier uh, obviously Tony Stewart has had success in a lot of all forms of motorsports including here uh, he's also during his career had his share of run-ins with media uh, fellow competitors and even NASCAR but yet through all that he seems to still hold uh, be held in a very high level of respect among his peers I just wondered that's got to be a delicate balance and how do you think he's successful why is that I think it's because of his honesty you know and at times his frustration with his honest uh, approach you might hear some real colorful things and, and have an issue on the front side. Um, might lead to something, an altercation on the track. Um, getting out of the cars and you know, scrap, you know, have a little scrappy session with someone after. But once the dust settles, you know, his honesty once again, um, I think, weighs out. And, and you know, he's not one to walk from a problem or run from a problem. He'll continue to talk to whoever it is and whatever it's about and, and work through those things. So I, that's kind of where I put it. You know, he, he's just honest at all times. Sometimes he probably wishes he had a filter on it, especially on the front side, to save some of the back end issues. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, that, that's that's what I respect about him. Is he's, he's just an honest guy. Other questions, Jimmy? Awesome. Well, well, over here to the far right, Mr. Garrow. Uh, Mark Carroll, PR, and uh, Jimmy, you know, Mark and Greg Zibzell, we were just talking a little bit about, you know, Tony and what he's he's going to go through to mentally and physically here in, in his, uh, on his way back. What's the toughest injury that you've ever had to get over? Have you ever had, you know, at some point where you really got busted and it, and it took a while to get back from? Yeah, I've been fortunate in my four-wheeled career to uh, have just some minor injuries and issues. But my first championship I won when I was racing dirt bikes. Um, a few races left in the season. Um, it was my birthday of all things. I fell in the first turn and bent the handlebars. And then as I rode a couple more laps, I just mentally forgot about my handlebars being bent and where that had the front tire pointing. Came over a double jump section of the racetrack and uh, just put my hand straight like I expected and the wheel was cocked. Tumbled, got tangled up with a bike and I broke my tib and fib on my left leg and pulled the knee uh, apart 
And when I was done tumbling, my foot was up here. And I'll never forget looking at the bottom of my motorcycle boot laying on the ground. Like, wow, this is really serious. And uh, went to the hospital, had reconstructive knee surgery, and they, they got everything put back together and had me in a cast. And uh, we figured out that if I rode, if I started the race and rode one lap in the next couple events, that I would tie with this other kid in points and I had more, would have more race wins and win the championship. So my dad, with his fabrication skills, designed a little thing off the side of the bike, um, borrowed some adult-sized leathers and boots and all that, and got my foot propped up and rode one lap, tied the, uh, uh, tied the kid in points, won the tiebreaker due to wins, and went and got my first championship trophy on stage and crutches. So uh, I, I was in a cast for quite a while. That was a six, eight-month process uh, to, to get through. But um, I was so young and really nothing stuck around mentally. It didn't bother me any way, shape, or form. So I was pretty lucky with the age, not only to heal the injury from my knee, but then also mentally it just didn't have an effect on me. Uh, but how old were you when that happened? You said, you know. That was on my eighth birthday. Your eighth birthday. Eighth birthday. So when you hit the ground and you immediately knew your foot was like, wasn't where it was supposed to be, is that it? Or Yeah. I, my, I was staring at the bottom of my motorcycle boot. And I knew that was bad. <laughs> and then there was somebody trying to help me off the track. And my dad was running over. He saw me fall. And when he saw my leg and somebody trying to move me, um, that person still today probably regrets touching me because my dad <laughs> stuffed him. I mean, he came running up and planted the person that was trying to help. It was just a reaction. You know, and you could hear me screaming and saw my leg in an awkward position and was just being a, a protective dad. Thanks. Yep. Over here to the left, Lee. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Can you talk a little bit about the changes coming at Stuart Haas Racing as far as adding Rodney Childers or, you know, perhaps going to a fourth team next season and how that will benefit Hendrick Motorsports? Yeah, I, I don't, I hear the rumors. I'm not sure what is happening or will happen um, from personnel changes to adding cars. Um, and yeah, still, still learn a lot about Tony's health and, and what's going to happen with the 14 car. But, uh, you know, we have a great relationship with Stuart Haas Racing, and uh, I know with Harvick coming on board, Kevin and I have talked uh, already, and I think that you know, we work well together now, but I think that can uh, improve and be better in the future. And the more smart people pulling in the same direction, the better both companies are going to be. Um, you know, Stuart Haas has shown their ability to win races and championships, and uh, I think for the, the good of all of us, the more smart people, the more dedicated, focused people on both both teams, uh, the better all of us are going to be. 